Hello and welcome to Politics Extra, an interactive live radio program focusing on topical and development issues. This program is brought to you by the Progressive Impact Organization for Community Development, PRIMO. I am Adaobi Obiamunno with Chibuzi Obonyaya. I'm glad to be here and many thanks for joining us in the program. And please know that you can join us live on Facebook at Official PRIMO. The spelling of PRIMO is P-R-I-M-O-R-E-G. I also have Stephanie and Dejoke Henry on the program. Good yeah. evening, everyone. You're welcome. Kindly give us a, an update on news making the rounds today in Nigeria. I'll do. The Minister of Finance, Budget and Planning, Zainab Hamed, said that the 1.3 trillion intervention fund the federal government provided for the past sector has not yielded any significant result. On March 1st, 2017, the federal government had approved the sum of 701 billion naira as a power assurance guarantee fund for the Nigerian Bulk Electricity Trader NBET to pay for the electricity produced by the generation companies Jenkos to the national grid for the period of two years. But secondly, the zoning committee of the People's Democratic Party PDP is presently locked in a crucial meeting over which side of the country should produce the presidential candidate of the party. The meeting, which is reportedly taking place at the Benue State Governor's Lodge Abuja and presided over by the Governor of Benue State, Samuel Potom, um, is holding right now. The meeting is very crucial because the 37-member committee is expected to come up with the outcome of its deliberations. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the update, Stephanie. Now let's turn our attention to the worsening state of insecurity across Nigeria, especially Kaduna State, which has been under serious attack by terrorists lately. Killings across different parts of Nigeria in the last few months and weeks have been overshadowed by politics and the recent air, road and train attacks in Kaduna State, which left so many casualties. And one week after terrorists attacked the Kaduna-bound train, the Nigerian Railway Corporation has revealed that over 160 passengers are still unaccounted for. Since the unfortunate incident happened, affected families and Nigerians have been aggrieving. The media is overwhelmed by the solid tales from across the country, but the killings persist. Politicians paused for a moment and carried on with their activities. The reactions from the Kaduna state government and federal government have exposed that much more needs to be done if Nigeria must curb insecurity. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari condemned the bombing of the passenger train and reiterated his earlier directive that the military should deal ruthlessly with the terrorists. This response from Mr. President is now repetitive and predictable. And a joint report by the Community of Parties Against Mass Atrocities and the Joint Action Civil Society Committee last week revealed that no fewer than 1,545 persons have been killed by terrorists within the first quarter of 2022. And joining us in the studio to analyze the rise in mass atrocities across Ni Nigeria is the country director at Global Rights Nigeria, Abiodun Daewoo. Welcome to the program. Good evening. Thank you for having me. The latest mass atrocities report says that terrorists killed 1,545 people in Kaduna, Zamfara, and other states within 90 days. Could you give us a sense of how we got there? First of all, that, that, that at least those were the deaths that we could double verify. So deaths that we could not double verify were not accounted for. Otherwise, we'll have more than 4,000. Um, let that sink in. Um, in 90 days, you, the records we've gotten is of more than 4,000 people. We double verified more than 1,500 people. Tells you averagely how many people are losing to terrorism. And those numbers accounted only for people who have died due to terrorist attacks. It's not counting the people who died from extrajudicial killings. It's not counting the people who have died from other causes of mass atrocities across Nigeria, ritual killing communal clashes, it's not accounting for those ones at all. Herd, um, herdsmen attacked, it's not accounting for that, just from terrorist attacks. And that the worst affected states are Kaduna, um, Zamfara, Niger, 
states are the worst affected states and that there are characteristics that these states have in common as well um, and, and perhaps we can go into that um, immediately or later if you want for us to yeah. please go, all ahead. Right, go ahead okay so first of all that these are mineral producing states uh, solid minerals uh, are in abundance first that they have a lot of ungoverned spaces they're mineral producing states um, and there are states where uh, unemployment is quite high so on a general level in Nigeria, you've got uh, about a quarter of Nigerians are currently un unemployed. Uh, the statistics as at this time last year, it was that one third of all Nigerians were unemployed. Um, and that is, that's a deep cut. If you think deeply about our, our polity, that's almost half of us are unemployed. We're not talking about underemployed people, totally unemployed people. You've got also um, the dynamics of ungoverned spaces. So do you have a lot of forest reserves um, that have no governance whatsoever? The rural areas where they feel no impact of government whatsoever. Uh, I found in Zamfara, and particularly in Zamfara and Niger states. Um, Kaduna also has a lot of the ungoverned spaces. Kaduna also has the, the, the politics um, of the no northern Kaduna and southern Kaduna that has gone on for well over a decade and is also partly impacted by the conflict that has gone on in Fetu state as well because the, the border linkages between Fetu and Kaduna state and those conflicts have also gone on for years. Interestingly, the conflict in southern Kaduna with the link to Plato state um, has gone on for over 40 years while we only think like to think about the last seven or 10 years, but that they've been compounded because they've not been dealt with uh, are some of the factors that we must think about. But, but for Kaduna State, let's pause and think of another factor. There are at least 21 military formations in Kaduna State alone. One would have thought that that would be one of the reasons why you will not have terrorist attacks there. But well, unfortunately, we keep like over and over. I think today also we've heard that a military formation was also attacked. Yes. Um, and as soon as the IGP left Kaduna, that should be on Monday. Yes, that was the, yesterday. There was another attack. There was another attack. As a matter of fact, we count attacks every single day in Kaduna State. But let me bring you bring in another perspective because it's out there. People talk about it, uh, about Kaduna in particular, that there are some affected residents claim that what is going on is ethnic ethnic cleansing do you what do you make up of all this um, uh, opinion well i would put an analysis without naming things um, to this the area most deeply impacted from the records um, from our documentation is southern kaduna and um, there may be a lot of reasons for southern kaduna there's a lot of minerals in southern kaduna whoever owns southern kaduna should also have access to those minerals um, that's on, on one on the one hand but residents feel that because southern Kaduna is predominantly Christian that they are being attacked by other religions um, over there for their religion is also why they think that this is ethnic cleansing so that they can take over their land there, there are elements of truth to the taking over of communal lands um, once the communities have been attacked but the question is, is it religiously linked or is it linked to the minerals in the land or are we also dealing with climate change on one hand or are we dealing with, with a lot of um, the political undertone that has gone on for years in Kaduna State or are we just dealing with a combination of all of them? But make no mistake that the attacks in Kaduna State feel very, very coordinated. Okay, um, you talked about the mineral deposits in Southern Kaduna. But are there reports of illegal mining going on there? Well, there's unregulated mining going on in virtually every state of Nigeria. Every state of Nigeria. And this gives rise to some of this atrocity. And it does. It does. So, for example, let me take you to two other states. Let me take you to... Um, I'll take you to the, um, the gold alluvial belt that runs all the way from Zamfara, all the way down slightly slides through Kano, not really a larger deposit in Kaduna, then goes to Niger State, where you also have that, that link, that, that belt of gold. 
that belt of gold is for me one of the reasons why we've got a lot of the conflicts particularly in Zamfara state and we reported about um, the conflict then about 10 12 years ago um, when we just started to work in Zamfara state where um, miners were being buried alive um, as far back as 2010 and we had reported it and said this is going to turn ugly in the long run so you had reprisal attacks between communities who were also crossing borders while that was going on um, and that subsequently that people started to even forget the original reason why those attacks were going on and the reprisal attacks became the game also because of the impunity that nobody was getting punished for what was going on in Zamfara State. It's taking the government till 2011 to finally say, ah, it must be the gold. Which That's in was State. so obvious. That's in Zamfara State. Which was so, so, so obvious for many years. Also remember that Zamfara has a lot of ungoverned spaces and that we share borders with Niger um, by Zamfara. So Zamfara has been a time bomb waiting to happen and it's finally, the gunpowder finally is smelling. It hasn't even blown yet. It, it's unfortunate that bureaucracy ha had to drag us this long. Did bureaucracy drag us or simply lack of political will? Talking about lack of political will, you mentioned that um, the killings in Kaduna and Ketu and other parts of um, northern part of Nigeria has been going on for the last 40 years. Mm. What is the government, especially Kaduna State government, not doing right? What are we not doing right as a country? First of all, we're, we're, we are downplaying impunity. People say that corruption is Nigeria's biggest problem. But corruption is just a seed in the fruit of um, impunity. That you can do things and get away with it. As a matter of fact, the larger scale that you do things, the more you are able to get away with it. If you are going to steal, you have to steal really big in Nigeria to get away with it. If you're going to kill, just kill a lot of people, that way you get away with it. If you kill one person, we'll arrest you. We'll actually, actually we'll beat you up and then you know, burn you. Jungle justice. If you kill five, we'll arrest you. If you kill a hundred, you kill a thousand, we'll call you to a negotiation table. That's how we roll. Unfortunately. But that's not how a civilized country should, should roll. The rule of law. Now, when we were growing up, and I'll use this family analogy, that there were rules at home. And for children, it felt restrictive. And that sometimes you will make mistakes, but then you were punished. But as you grew older, you realized that rules were what helped to keep the family coercion and helped to keep us all on the straight and narrow. You know that you commit the crime, you pay the price. But when you discover that in a home that we're only going to wage our finger and say, Wait till your father gets home and then father gets home and rubs his head and says, he's a small boy, leave him alone. And we begin to excuse things so that when they're large scale atrocities, we begin to label them. And under the label, we begin to, uh, in quotes, forgive them. So we say this is a communal clash. This is a religious clash. Um, and no one gets punished just on the basis of it's a communal clash, it's a religious clash. And reprisals begin to snowball till it becomes what has become of Nigeria today. It's quite unfortunate. When we've mentioned 1,300, you think these are just numbers. 1,000 more than 1,500. But these are actually individuals. Those are people. They have families. Yes. They have siblings. They have friends. They have colleagues. Our mothers are out there restless. The young wives have been the widows. Dreams of our youth buried six feet under the ground. Yeah. If we do not tackle this today, what would happen in the next five years? And the onus lies not only on the government, but on all of us. Jose, it's time for us to get the person listening at the other end of the dial to join the conversation. All right, to join us, do call 090-30,899. 090 -30 and also you can call 80 3498 or call 80 Hello? Hello? Okay. 
you do well to call us back, 090-30,899. Hello? Okay, it's, um, maybe the phone lines are mal malfunctioning, but you could call 0809-40,072 if you're unable to reach us on the other number. It's 0809-40,072. Hello. Good evening. Your name and where you're calling us from. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Apostle from Abuja. What should the government do differently to solve Nigerian security challenge, Apostle? Yeah, my thing is good. That is okay. So unfortunately, we find ourselves in the security problem. Apostle. If there is a you know, one man that uh, one, is this uh, one of one time IG, if any insecurity, any problem like this that lasted like this, the hand of politicians is uh, on it. And they must only believe on that man uh, that they should. Those politicians, they should know they should know that they're not everything is they used to do politics. These people, they, they, they are some uh, politicians that are desperate of power. They use uh, all whatever they use. some of these issues these days. It's as if we are losing, we don't value humanity again. Uh, well, how, what do you think about that? I think that's not true. That's not very accurate. Okay. I think that as Nigerians, we actually do really care about one another. We really do care about human lives, an average Nigerian. But then I also think that we've become, what we, we've had to develop a desensitization yes. as a form of self-preservation. Otherwise, we all go crazy right. just on a daily basis with the horror and the atrocities. So sometimes you will psychologically develop a tool to, to protect your mind. Otherwise, you lose it yeah. on Hello. a daily basis. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Your name and where you're calling us from. Okay, my name is Austin. I'm calling from Kansai, Abuja. Let's hear you, Austin. Yeah, the problem here is that we should go back to the basics. Why should why should why should why should we have only one central 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 police system in Nigeria? A country as big as Nigeria we only have, we have one central police system. You understand? Until you decentralize the police, all this is by being in cosmetic. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Austin. He believes that we should um, decentralize state policing. It's one of the way out. Do you agree with him? I believe more in community policing than um, than state policing. There are, of course, many factors, and there are many Nigerian factors to think about when we think about state policing. Um, it's also about the structures of democracy and how strong the institutions are to also ensure that those offices are not used. But that said, I think that we have to rethink as Nigerians uh, how we think of security and peace. That the militarization of security does not guarantee peace. So that we can have more soldiers, we can have more formations, as we've found in Kekunu State. We can get them more guns, more weapons, but then that um, if in, uh, in, it's not a in security, it's not a guarantee that in the insecurity and the terrorist attacks, would continue unabated that, that that is a great possibility and and so that once you mention insecurity in nigeria people think more soldiers more guns and we'll be okay and we don't talk about intelligence that much then we don't talk about it sure yes. Hello. yes good evening your name and where you're calling us from let's hear you Yes, I just want to just a little contribution I want to make. You see, today everybody knows that we all come from a family. Every individual did not fall from the sky. Sure. And there are a lot of technicalities and words being used to describe circumstances, situation, relationship. 
and all that here. But the simple truth is, the individual, when he or she was growing up, he grew under the protection of someone, maybe the father, the society, or the community. Now, I always ask this question, where was the society, or the father, or the mother, or the guardian, when this child or this individual became this monster he is? Up to the point that we have recruited so many of such monsters, terrorizing everybody here and there. The thing is not about how you, you mount the the most expensive security apparatus or people who are expert in managing security issues in the whole world. It is not about uh, even community police, about individual police. You police yourself. That means going back to the people where that is going back to where we are getting it wrong. That is the upbringing of the child by the various individuals that are the, uh, what do they call, the guidance or the father or the mother the family. or those that are responsible for the opinion of the child. So I think the only way we can correct this is to go back to the joint table, that is the family. If there's a situation whereby anyone who commits any crime is being killed immediately as soon as he's being caught, I don't think, I don't think there'll be crime spreading this way. A good anomaly is this. If you are to move from Abuja to Kaduna and you are being told that there are a lot of scorpions on the way, you know they can they can sting you. And from Abuja to Niger, they think there are thousands of lions. They will not be that side. That is why when you kill those who kill directly, our Bible and the Quran have mentioned this. We are playing with the word of God. But when you say these people, when you get them, you take them, you pardon them, you want to rehabilitate them, you are making a mess. Okay, um, you have 30 seconds. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your contribution. Wow. Let me take this other call. Hello? Yeah, good evening. Your name and where you're calling us from? My name is Danladi. I'm calling you from Abalaki. Let's hear you, Danladi. Yes. Uh, problem of the ability to say the truth. The country, we, are, we don't have enough security. Especially the police. If you can see a vast area, maybe there, there's not even a single policeman there. And that is why all the criminals they have studied. Let's just take an example like the area we are now. The only police station is now Goshen. And you see the area right from the Santa down to ERQC. All that area, more than 100,000 of people, no single policeman. Okay, if those terrorists or those uh, uh, bandits, they discover it in our villages, you can see a very big village, no single police there, or at the area, a district. How many of police in the district? You may not be no more than even 20% calorie Okay, 30 seconds. Please round up. Okay. To the police, the only federal government really, they knew what is there. That's why they are still recruiting the uh, police. Okay, thank you so much for your contribution. You said we do not have enough security personnel. While the caller before you also talked about um, family and then capital punishment. Um, before I get to you, Stephanie, you've yes. just been watching. And yes, morning. I have a lot to say honestly because Kaduna is uh, kind of precious to me. I grew up there and my family still lives there. And Kaduna is one of the most cosmopolitan cities in this country so when um, this spate of insecurity killings and all of that keep happening and then nothing is done or you do not seem to see a consolidated action or something that is going to stem it in the board or finish it up totally you get really worried now the governor has said that he's going to bring in mercenaries I mean, isn't that going to compound the problem? Where are these people going to come from? Look at how um, Boko Haram snowballed into something really big. They were, you know, maybe just... Um, Pockets of building. Exactly, you know, um, used by the community to do something, to tackle something. And then, before you knew it, they were, they were out of control. So where does he get the mercenaries from? When you brought them in, how do you send them back? How do you contain them? What do you do? Isn't this going to create more problems for the already troubled area? Okay. So honestly, I think that I am okay. concerned. Okay. Okay. So then Kaduna is for the want of time, uh, let's run up to um, solutions. Okay. Let's get to you. Uh, when you 
So I, I started with um, first identifying that the militarization of peace and security will not necessarily guarantee um, peace and security, and especially in the context of a country like Nigeria. And I um, used an illustration to someone earlier today, and I'm going to say that to Abdullahi. So um, you, if you live in a mosquito-infested house, and um, initially you started with raid, and you would um, um, fumigate the house. After a while, you decided that mosquitoes are still coming and in droves, and then you decide that, mm, let me use shell tox, because shell tox is what works now. The other must have been adulterated, and so it is not working. And so you go, you go and get that. Then you start good night is, is what is next. And then, you know, you keep looking for it, but then you keep getting infested with mosquitoes. Rather than focus on the military formations, on, 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 on the insecticides, could you focus on where the mosquitoes and the conditions that are breeding the mosquitoes? The environment. Could you do the environment? What environment is exacerbating terrorism in Nigeria? First, I would do not deal with the southeast, um, deal with the northeast well. And so you've got a lot of them who have run away from the northeast and have come to the southeast. I've also mentioned that at least one third of Nigerians are unemployed. Um, that um, impunity has been has become a really really big problem. So that if you steal money, if you kill a person, however big your crime is, is the best way to get away with it. If you've committed a crime, just commit a bigger crime. That we must change those factors. Now, um, I forgot his name had mentioned about the family and um, that bring up children. And I agree with him. Our problem started with not bringing children up right. But I will not directly blame families. I will blame government. Now, we have the most number of out-of-school children in the world. Let that sink in. Not, in. not in Africa, not in West Africa. In the world. We're not the largest country in the world. Very far from it. And the quality of education in Nigeria is so poor. So if that... You, if, if I were to send my daughter to a public school today, it's pretty much just committing suicide if I did that. Because the, the, the education system just isn't working. ASO has been on strike for a while now, and right now they're not the priority. Football became our next priority, and maybe now that, that's yeah, out of the way. Out of <laughs> yeah, well, but then, you know, I'm glad that happened. But maybe, yeah. maybe we would pay more attention, attention yeah. to yeah. what's going things. on. But then you had, in the Northeast... Um, more than 2 million unaccompanied children heading eastward, uh, sorry, westward, from there, unaccompanied. Now, ask yourself, what became of those children in the past 12 years? One, ask yourself also what became of the children that did not go to school, they are Marjorie, and that you think of how we, how we mistreat our human development. Every 10 minutes, a, a Nigerian woman has died to childbirth-related complications. So if you're going to blame the family, let us also re remember that a lot of children have had to grow up without mothers, not because Nigerian women are weak and, give, and die at childbirth, but because our health system has failed. The failure of the health system has contributed to terrorism. Okay, um, because of our time, in one minute or 30 seconds, what would you say to the Kaduna State government with and respect the to government. the killings in southern Kaduna? And injustice, and impunity, and then we would, you know who the terrorists are, you know who their sponsors are, act on that, not on empty, vain words. These are human lives. Thank you so much for your contribution. We most sincerely appreciate um, the country director of Global Rights Nigeria, Abiodun Bayou, for joining us today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Politics Extra will be back on Thursday, but tomorrow public, public conscience will come your way at 10.05 a.m. It promises to be interesting. Do join us. I am Chidozie Obonyan. And do you know that the idea that your vote will not count during elections is a lie propagated to discourage citizens from voting? Be vigilant, be wise, and participate in all elections. I am Adelwi Obiabunyan. Stay safe.